This video is brought to you by Poolonomics. Your total alkalinity plays a huge role in your pool, but it can be confusing when you're first getting started. In this video, we'll take you through everything a pool owner should know when it comes to alkalinity. Let's start from the top. What is total alkalinity? Total alkalinity, often abbreviated to TA, measures your water's ability to resist change in pH. This works by absorbing acids in the water, thereby preventing those acids from lowering your pH level. This is why total alkalinity is called a pH buffer, because it shields your pH from substances that would normally lower it. To a lesser extent, total alkalinity also prevents a sharp increase in your pH level. The chemical process behind this one is a bit more complicated, but it essentially involves taking up resources in the water that are required for your pH to rise. In short, the higher your total alkalinity, the more stable your pH level will be and the harder it will be to adjust. Why is your total alkalinity important? Total alkalinity matters because your pH level matters. The ideal pH level for your pool water is slightly basic at somewhere between 7.2 and 7.8. This is where chlorine works best without making the water too harsh on your skin, hair and eyes. Keeping your pH level within this range is extremely difficult without total alkalinity keeping guard, as it provides the necessary buffer to counter small changes in the water chemistry. Without it, your pH level could easily fall too low, causing the water to become corrosive to your pool surfaces and equipment, leading to a problem known as pool etching. Your pH level may also drift too high, causing calcium minerals to precipitate out of the water, which soon results in calcium scaling that can potentially damage your pool. What contributes to total alkalinity? There's a lot of stuff dissolved in your pool water. Some of that stuff acts like a sponge, absorbing acids it comes into contact with. It's those substances that make up your total alkalinity, and they mostly include carbonates, bicarbonates, hydroxides, and cyanurates. These are often added to your water through various pool care products, including those used to adjust your pH and alkalinity, as well as chlorine stabilizers. For example, every time you raise your pH level with soda ash, you introduce more carbonates to the water, and every time you use stabilized chlorine tablets, you introduce more cyanurates. Perhaps the best example is baking soda. This is used to directly increase total alkalinity by adding more bicarbonates to the water, and it's also the primary ingredient in many alkalinity increases. How is total alkalinity different from pH? It's easy to confuse pH and total alkalinity because alkaline is a measurement on the pH scale, but they're not the same thing. When you measure the pH level, you're looking at how acidic the water is based on how much or how little acid is dissolved in your water. This is represented on the pH scale from 1 to 14. When you measure total alkalinity, you're basically looking at how effective your water is at negating acid before it has a chance to influence your pH level. This is represented in parts per million, or ppm. If you imagine pH as a battery, total alkalinity is like a surge protector, absorbing electrical spikes that would otherwise wreak havoc on the battery. How does total alkalinity influence pH? Total alkalinity has a strong influence over pH, so they do often correlate. When your total alkalinity is high, your pH level becomes very resistant to changes in the water, particularly the addition of acids that would normally lower it. This is a big part of why the pH level in most pools tends to drift upwards over time. But the same is also true in reverse. When your total alkalinity is very low, any acid introduced to your water will significantly lower your pH because it doesn't have the buffer it needs to resist that change. With that being said, they are still different measurements and they can still act independently of one another, which means it's not impossible to see a pool with high pH and low alkalinity or vice versa. What is the ideal alkalinity level? The ideal total alkalinity in a pool is between 80 and 120 parts per million. This level provides enough of a buffer to your pH without making it too difficult to adjust when you really need to. However, all pools have a sort of resting pH the water tries to get back to, and this can sometimes be on the very edge of the ideal pH range. In that case, adjusting the total alkalinity to compensate is a good idea. For example, if your pH level tends to sit at around 7.8, you may need to reduce your total alkalinity below the 80 parts per million threshold to free up more acid in the water. Saltwater pools also require a slightly lower level, 
often somewhere between 50 and 80 parts per million, because you have to account for conditions inside the salt cell where scale formation is more likely. What causes total alkalinity to change? A lot of things can change your pool's total alkalinity. Some of these things directly increase alkalinity, such as adding an alkalinity increaser like baking soda, a pH increaser like soda ash, or even a chlorine stabilizer like cyanuric acid. Adding any kind of acid to your water will eat through your pH buffer, which reduces your total alkalinity. Many types of chlorine are acidic, as is muriatic acid and sodium bisulfate, also known as dry acid. Other things are more indirect, such as when chlorine interacts with organic contaminants in the water. This includes things like sweat, urine, sunscreen, leaves and insects, all of which create an acid byproduct that lower your total alkalinity. Rainwater or top-ups will dilute your water and therefore also lower the concentration of total alkalinity. The opposite is true for evaporation, which slowly increases your alkalinity as your pool loses water, although this effect is a lot more subtle. How do you test total alkalinity? Most pool testing kits allow you to test your total alkalinity, along with pH, free chlorine, calcium hardness, and cyanuric acid. Test strips are more widely used because they're easier, faster, and cheaper than other testing methods. A strip is simply dipped into your pool water, causing it to change color based on your total alkalinity. The color is then measured against the provided chart to determine a rough level. Liquid testing kits are considerably more accurate, but they do require a bit more patience and a bigger upfront investment. These also rely on a color chart to determine a level, but the testing process uses a method called titration. It requires filling up a vial with water from your pool before adding drops from a reagent bottle. How do you adjust total alkalinity? When total alkalinity is too low, adding more acid-absorbing substances to the water will raise alkalinity. The most effective substance for raising your total alkalinity is bicarbonate. You can add bicarbonates to your water by simply adding sodium bicarbonate, otherwise known as baking soda. Another common substance is sodium carbonate, or soda ash, but adding carbonates will also raise your pH level alongside alkalinity. When total alkalinity is high, you need an acid to eat away at your pH buffer, thereby lowering your total alkalinity. While any acid will work, muriatic acid is very effective, widely available and inexpensive. If safety is a concern, sodium bisulfate or dry acid is a common alternative, as it's easier to handle than liquid acid. So how do you maintain total alkalinity? Total alkalinity works hard to stabilize your pH level, but alkalinity itself isn't exactly stable. As such, like most levels in your pool, total alkalinity will fluctuate over time. While changes are inevitable, you can mitigate the impact this has on your pool through regular testing and ensuring you always have the right substances on hand to adjust where needed. So there you have it, a complete overview and beginner's guide to total alkalinity in your pool. Check the description below for links to our full companion article, along with supporting articles for many of the points discussed in the video. We also have a free downloadable and printable checklist to help with your pool maintenance schedule. You can get it for free at poolonomics.com slash checklist. That's all from us. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for all things pool care.